Good morning. It's two minutes past nine, so we can start. Uh, welcome uh, to the activities of Intercollege on Optics. Today, uh, we have a, a full activity. We have uh, uh, lectures and we have also uh, experimental hands-on sessions. So, uh, for the beginning, we will start with uh, a lecture. Uh, introduced by uh, Professor Ahmadou Vag from uh, University Czech Anta Diop from Senegal. And uh, he will present uh, a lecture on laser spectroscopy and multispectral analysis and some applications in this field. Then we will have uh, a lecture in optical tweezers, basics and application, presented by Dan Kozok from uh, uh, National Research Council of Italy. And uh, then in the second part of the day, starting with two o'clock, we will have uh, combined uh, hands-on activities. So we will have uh, the experimental session with surface plasma resonance method for precise detection and low concentration solution. They are groups one to three with, uh, this is in MLAB, uh, also, uh, experimental session in uh, determination of optical properties of thin films, uh, influence of the substrate and materials, also in MLab, and uh, we will have in Adriatico informatics lab, the computer lab processing. So they are groups four, five, six. Everything will be followed uh, in uh, accordance with the program. So keep. Uh, attention on the, the program and at the end of uh, the hands-on session from this uh, 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 location at uh, half past uh, three, please groups uh, which are involved in the experiments in MLab, please go because you already know the road. So may I introduce Professor Ahmad Duvag, please Professor. Thank you, thank you very much. Please, Mr. Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. It's a, it's a, a great pleasure for me to be here today at uh, at ICTP, and uh, I would like uh, to thank the organizer for giving the opportunity uh, to talk about uh, multispectral and laser spectroscopy with some application. So I, I start with uh, the outline. Uh, before uh, going, I, I would make a brief presentation of the uh, LAM network. We stand for uh, African Laser, Atomic, Molecular, and Optical Science Network. Uh, to me, this is important because uh, it is uh, in the framework of this uh, uh, network uh, that uh, we have done uh, all these things I am going to talk about. So, and after, I will, I will show... The, the activities that uh, we have uh, in the Atom Laser Laboratory at the University Sheikh Anta Diop of, of Dakar. So, uh, for the presentation of the, of the network, it was uh, uh, created in, uh, in 91 at the occasion of the first international workshop on the physics and uh, modern application of lasers at the University uh, Sheikh Anta Diop of Dakar, Senegal. And uh, it was with a participation of about uh, uh, 20, uh, 20 countries, 20 participating countries from, from Africa and also from the, from the United States, from, from Italy, and so on. And uh, of course, it was with the support of, uh, of ICTP, the Senegalese government, and French embassy in Senegal. And there was a, a, a personal involvement of uh, uh, Professor Abdul Salam and uh, Professor Galeno Denaru, 
who was uh, the director of the Office of External Activity. Uh, I want to take opportunity to, uh, to pay tribute to, uh, to Professor Abdul Salam and to Professor uh, Galeno De Nardo. They have done a lot for the development of science in, uh, in Africa and in developing country. So uh, from 1996, uh, the network uh, have established a strong interaction with Lund University and the International Program in Physical Science, IPPS, in, uh, in Sweden, Uppsala University. And uh, this was thanks also to the effort of uh, Professor Galeno Donardo, uh, Professor Sun Swanberg from Lund University, and uh, Professor Lena Asselgren from uh, International Program of, uh, of Physical Science. The, the main purpose of the, of the network is uh, to promote the, the physics uh, of lasers, atom, molecule, optical science, and their application as well as to develop a scientific cooperation in Africa in, the, in this field. So you will see uh, uh, during my talk all kind of collaborative action that uh, we have uh, established uh, within uh, uh, this, uh, this network. Here we have, uh, we have a map of, uh, of the representative of, of, of the network, of the representation. We, have, uh, we are organized such that there is representation in, uh, in Africa. And also we have uh, international contact. And our international contacts are everywhere, as you can see in, in Europe, in, uh, in the United States, in Canada, in Brazil, in Russia, in, even in, uh, in Australia. We have somebody there for the, for the representation in India and so on. OK, so uh, the activities of the network, it is workshop, uh, school and conferences, uh, development and cooperation in lasers and optical science, uh, training program for the development and, and building capacity in research in optical science in Africa. Uh, and in this, in this framework, uh, the network is, a, is a, uh, or my laboratory is a node of the African Laser Center. And this African Laser Center was, was created thanks to the activities of a network where we were trying to, to bring hard infrastructure, laser infrastructure, in, uh, in many places in, uh, in, uh, in, in Africa. So we have also training program for, for, uh, for development and building capacity, uh, activities in international society. Our network is a member of the ICO uh, International uh, Commission. It is the International Commission for Optics and also for uh, in, in SOSA committee. And uh, we, we were a member of a committee for International Year of Light. So this is some of the, of the slide to show what we, we have done uh, till the, <laughs> the first uh, uh, meeting in Senegal in 91. We got a meeting in, uh, after that meeting in Zimbabwe in, uh, in, uh, in 93, in Ghana in 94, in Sudan in 96, in Tunisia in 2002, in 2004 in Cameroon, in 2007 again in Ghana, in 2010 in Senegal, 12 in Senegal, and also 14 in Senegal. So we, we are going around, around Africa trying uh, to put uh, people together doing research in, uh, in optical science. This is the, the, the slide from my lab. Uh, in 2000, there was uh, the first ICO topical meeting in Africa. So uh, some people can uh, recognize themselves. I say Professor, uh, uh, Professor Shepard Sh uh, is here. It's you? Yes. <laughs> and Ma Maria Calvo, Anna also. Anna is, Anna is there. And I was uh, very happy to, uh, to, to have them in my house. So this was a, a great pleasure for me. So this is uh, the LAM 10 in 2010. So we, we are trying, because if you want to do such kind of networking, it is very important to have good collaboration of political authorities. So we, we got opportunity uh, to visit the, the President of Republic of Senegal uh, during the, the LAM 10 meeting. Here you can recognize also some people. We, we have uh, Sun Swanberg is there. Uh, I think Joe also, Joe Nimela is there. Professor Alote, who is a member of, uh, of uh, ICTP Scientific Council. Uh, I am there myself with the president. I'm taking the hand of the president, and, uh, and so on. We have many other uh, friends from Tunisia, from Morocco, uh, from, uh, from uh, other countries. I think Anthony Johnson also is there, and uh, Sekazi from, 
from the US and so on. And we, we try also to create the African Physical Society. And this African society, Physical Society was launched in, in Senegal. This is the member committee of this uh, African Physical Society. But, but up to now, I have to recognize we are trying to push the things so that this uh, African Physical Society can work effectively. The president is uh, Professor Alote, and uh, I am one of the uh, vice president uh, with uh, uh, this uh, professor from Tunisia and other people. And also we have uh, uh, ICTP also sitting on board of this uh, African Physical Society. And, and after that, in 2014 also, we, we, we make a launching of the African Optics and Photonic Society. It, it was one of the workshops also of the, of the LAM network in Senegal. Here you can see some people of the International Steering Committee. We have Anthony Johnson, Sun Sun Swanberg, uh, Johnny Mela, uh, Yagatai from, from, from Japan, who is in charge of uh, uh, getting funding, and many other people. Paul, Paul Boabashua is there, uh, uh, I think Gasmi Tayeb and other people. Murad Sgar are member of this uh, uh, African, uh, optic, uh, African uh, Optics and Photonic Society. So this is uh, the, the member of, uh, of uh, the people participating to this meeting in Senegal. And here, this is the, the last LAM meeting with, uh, in collaboration with uh, African, uh, African Imaging, Spectral Imaging Network. The name is ASFIN. This network also was created in Senegal by the LAM network in, 2005, in, in 2010. It is a, a kind of sub-network uh, regrouping country from Senegal, from Cote d'Ivoire, from, uh, from Ghana, uh, from, uh, from uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Mali, and Mali, uh, which is specialized in imaging. And in the framework of a collaboration between the LAM and this uh, sub-network, we have done a lot. It is uh, with the support of, uh, of ISP. It is the international program in physical science in Sweden. And here you can see the, the officer of, uh, of ISP, Ernst, is a taller one, and Carla, who came down in Senegal for this, for this meeting. And it was also the occasion to make a celebration of the International Year of Light. So now uh, I'm going to, uh, to talk about uh, the activities that uh, uh, we are doing in our, in, in our laboratory in Senegal. But as I say, it, it is in the, in the big framework of, uh, of this uh, uh, African Laser Atomic and uh, Molecular and Optical Science Network. So we, I will talk about uh, lasers and lead-induced fluorescence spectroscopy, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, uh, X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, which is, which is not exactly in, in the framework of, of the LAM, but this is a collaborative action that uh, we have with the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, and also we have, uh, we, I will show something about the multi a spectral microscopy that uh, we, we start uh, with uh, uh, Lund Institute of Technology with, uh, with the support of uh, also uh, ISP in 2009 in, uh, in, uh, in Ghana. And after that, we, we organize also in Ghana in collaboration with uh, ICTP and a group from Genova, Francesco, a special workshop in Ghana on optical tweezer. This, this was a very inspiring workshop for us to continue to do a multispectral uh, microscopy and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get into topics for uh, diagnostic of, uh, of malaria and so on, uh, thanks to some of the work of uh, Dan Kojak, I think he's going to talk after me, who, uh, who have developed also uh, a technique for, uh, for malaria uh, diagnostic. So, and, and, and after that, we, we, we have also a topic on multispectral imaging in, in remote sensing. Uh, uh, this is uh, also in the, in the framework of uh, LAM and ASFIN network, and uh, with the uh, support of ISP, and uh, particularly with a, a very strong involvement of Professor uh, Sun Swanberg, uh, who uh, is uh, inspiring a lot of things that uh, we are doing uh, within our uh, network. And the last one will be on horizontal microscopy with uh, 
with lasers. This is the image I show you uh, during the meeting, uh, last meeting near the, near the sea. Uh, well, this is the, the last topic. We, we just uh, start to, uh, to do, uh, to do this, uh, this work, and I will show you some image, some, uh, some uh, preliminary work that we are doing in this field. Okay, so, so let's start. For, by the laser uh, and lead induced fluorescence spectroscopy, this is one of the, of the topic we have, we have started. As I say, in, in 96, uh, we got a, a strong collaboration with Lund uh, Institute of Technology, Lund University, with uh, Sun Swanberg. And this, uh, this collaborative action starts here at, at ICTP, because Sun was coming giving lectures, and uh, with uh, Professor Denaro, uh, with Sun, with myself as a, as a, a president of, of the LAM network, we have uh, organized a meeting in Lund. On, uh, on diode laser uh, spectroscopy. And during this meeting, there was a participation of, uh, it, is, it, it was a kind of, not meeting, a workshop for people from Ghana, for Paul Babasha from Ghana, uh, uh, Abdallah from Sudan, myself from Senegal, and uh, a friend from, from Kenya to, to mount uh, a diode laser uh, spectroscopic uh, equipment so that we can do uh, absorption uh, saturation spectroscopy, modulation spectroscopy, and we started this topic in our different country, and uh, especially from my laboratory, we, we were able to train people from uh, from Mali, from Mauritania, and from uh, other uh, surrounding country. But I'm not going to talk about about this uh, uh, diode laser spectroscopy. I, I will I will uh, uh, focus on uh, on uh, on uh, on a lift, which is one of the most sensitive approach uh, available for analytical uh, purpose because it is uh, very easy to implement, it is uh, well investigated, and also it is non-invasive techniques. And it is uh, imperative for uh, many applications in, uh, in environmental uh, monitoring. So one of the, of the, of the, of the activity of the lab is uh, to, uh, to see the, the fluorescence in, in plant. And here you have a, a simplified uh, Jablonski diagram which saw how fluorescence is working, I think, uh, during the lecture of, uh, of Professor Alberto. He has shown uh, many things about that. Uh, you, can, you, you can see here, this is uh, the fluorescence uh, uh, emission. The, this is uh, the ex excitation in, in, the, in the S1 and S2 level. And after, there is some intercrossing uh, system, and you have the fluorescence. Now. Uh, if you have room temperature, you can, you can excite uh, any, any kind of uh, uh, molecules. So, so, and after, there is a, a fluorescence emission. So uh, the activity we have done is uh, the monitoring of the vegetation by uh, spectroscopic uh, detection. And this is very important by, if you make this detection by electromagnetic radiation, because it is a, it is a powerful, non-contact and, and non-destructive method in the study of uh, environments. So the, and the laser induced fluorescence spectroscopy of terrestrial vegetation is uh, an important aspect of active remote sensing, which provides a specific tool for assessing vegetation damage and forest decline. And, and as you know, the, the development of plant is based on the capture and the transformation of, uh, of sunlight by, by chlorophyll through a photosynthesis process. And uh, the efficiency of uh, this project, this process depends upon the presence of sufficient amount of water, mineral, nutrient, carbon dioxide, and light. So you can, the plant damage by pollutants like water stress, pathogen, uh, result of the reduced rate of photosynthesis. This is why it is important to, uh, to make the measurement of the depression of the uh, photosynthetic process, and it is a, an important uh, uh, criterion in the evaluation of uh, accessory pigment to chlorophyll A and stress condition in plant. Here I, I just show the, the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll, which is around uh, 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. I will, I will show in the, in, the, in the result. This is the, the instrumentation we, we have. It is a very simple uh, instrumentation that uh, uh, was uh, uh, financed by, uh, by uh, uh, IPPS, and we, 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 we made a workshop in Sweden in 2001 
where each group from, uh, from uh, different African country have mounted his own uh, 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 spectrometers. So, and, and this, this is very important. And after that, every group went back with his spectrometer. This, this is, uh, for in the African context, uh, this is important to, uh, to have your own equipment so that you can work at home. Not just uh, to go in some lab, in some, in some developed country to do things, and after, when you go back home, you, you cannot work anymore. So with this kind of system, and it was very effective. At this time, they just have the, the discovered the blue uh, lasers. And the blue laser is sitting here to, to make uh, fluorescence uh, spectroscopy and also to make other things like uh, photodynamic therapy. I will talk about that after. So this is uh, uh, some uh, applications that uh, we, we have done in our, in our laboratory uh, concerning uh, uh, especially uh, medicinal plants. You can see the, the different spectrum. And what is interesting in this, uh, in this uh, uh, assessment, it is the, the two peak of, of, of uh, fluorescent spectra, and you have to, to do the, the ratio of these two peak. And this ratio tells you about the state of, of the plant. You know, it is the, the F, uh, I cannot see very well here, it is the F uh, uh, 690 and the F 735 uh, nanometer peaks. If, you, if you, 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 you make the ratio of these two peaks, like, like here, it is, it is shown, you, you can see what is, what, what is the, the state of the plant. And at the same time, you can have also a fingerprint of, of each plant. Because here we, we have done with, uh, with uh, different uh, plants in, in, in our country. This is uh, uh, citronnier, carosolier, uh, Saha senegalensis, uh, uh, manguier, et puis uh, sapotier. Uh, this was done, uh, this was a, a MSc thesis of one of my students. And uh, we, it, it was very, very, very interesting to, to, to do such kind of work. And we got a collaboration with our friend from Ivory Coast. They, they take a, a portative instrumentation. We got a grant from the TOAS. And uh, they, they measure the, the lack of, uh, of uh, potassium in palm tree. You know, uh, before, before doing laser technology, they used to send the soil sample in France to wait for one, two months in order to, to get the result. And with this technique, they, they have immediately uh, the result. And they know what to do, what, uh, what measures they have to take so that uh, uh, to save uh, the plantation for some uh, potential uh, damage. And, and I talk with some people from Brazil, which are also using this technique in the, in the, in the orange plantation in, uh, in, uh, in Brazil. So af after that, we, we use the same equipment to do uh, uh, application in, uh, in photodynamic therapy uh, in, in collaboration with, uh, with uh, Professor Katerina Swanberg, who is uh, sitting here. So we, we made the first uh, clinical experience in Senegal. Uh, Lund University Medical Center, Lund University Ops Hospital, and also the Department of ENT at the Aristide Le Dantec University, and of course, the, the Department of Physics, uh, where, where is uh, uh, my lab. This is uh, the, the different application of this, uh, of this uh, PDT. Uh, the, the, the principle is, uh, is uh, relatively simple. Uh, it, is, it consists to, uh, uh, to, to give uh, uh, some kind of photosensitizer to a patient. And after one hour or two hours, it depends, you, you can make a, a, a checking by a blue, a blue uh, uh, laser diode that, uh, that I show you. And, and after that, you, you make a, a, a therapy with a, with a red light. So with a, with a, with a blue, blue diode, you can make a diagnostic. And, and, and the diagnostic, you, you can see the, the, the oh, OK, oh, pardon. You can, uh, you can see here the, the shoulder, the characteristic shoulder for the, for the cancer, which, uh, for the cancer cell which are absorbing. The, the photosensitizer. In this, in this, uh, in this uh, example, it is the alpha amino levonic acid, ALA. And, and the principle is very simple. After, after uh, absorbing the ALA and with shining and shining with, uh, with, uh, with red lasers, you, you make a, a excitation. And after there is some 
uh, inter a system crossing, and you, you transform, there is a photo, photochemical reaction which uh, uh, transforms the, the triplet oxygen to, to singlet oxygen. And, and, the, and the singlet oxygen is, a, is, a, is very bad for the, for the organism, the, the, the singlet oxygen. It is a poison. So that you, you, you induce uh, 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 the intoxication of, of the cancer cell by, by, this, uh, by this technique. And uh, we, we, okay, we, we started in Senegal, but unfortunately we, we, we cannot uh, develop further due to, uh, due to uh, a lack of uh, a strong uh, political commitment from our, our university authority and governmental authority, because uh, at this time, the product was very, uh, very expensive. And it is, uh, Katrina brings some ALA in, in our lab. At this time, I think one gram cost about $150. So this is uh, the, also the, the, the workshop we have done in, uh, in Lund. And this was published by, uh, by Katrina Swanberg and Sun Swanberg in the, in the Aero, Aerophysic uh, uh, News. So this is uh, the, some of the session in, uh, in, uh, in Dakar at the, at the hospital uh, with the participation of uh, Nels Benso and also uh, Christina uh, Swanberg. And, and this is biophotonic in, in nature. You see, the nature also is, is doing good but biophotonic by producing nice papaya fruit. OK, uh, another topic is the, the X-ray fluorescence. And uh, for the, this uh, X-ray fluorescence uh, uh, spectroscopy, we have a, a, a monochromatic radiation, uh, which can uh, excite also the system. And, uh, at, uh, and, and you will uh, obtain the, the emission of X-ray from, from higher shell. And what is interesting is that there is a, a characteristic emission for each element. So with this technique, uh, you, you can make uh, uh, analytical, analytical uh, uh, measurement. You can, you can measure concentration. You can do a lot of things. Uh, and if you have an unknown sample also, you can use a, a suitable X-ray sources. In, in our laboratory, in collaboration with uh, the International Atomic Energy, uh, we, we, we got a, a, a portable uh, X-ray X -ray, uh, X -ray, uh, spectrometers. And we have, this is the, the schematic of the analyzer. And this is uh, uh, in our lab, the, how the setup is there. You can see here, this is, uh, this is the, 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 the X-ray positive. You can take it off, and, and you can go in the field with it with, uh, with battery. And there is also a, a GPS, a, a GPS uh, wireless uh, transmission, which is integrated. So that if you, are, if you are making some analytical measurement in some place, you have at the same time the, the, all, the, all the coordinate all the, of, of the place or the lo lo location of a place. And for that, we, we, we start uh, mapping uh, a geological sample in Senegal, in the, in the eastern part of Senegal. In this part, you have, there is a lot of gold. There is gold, there is a, a zirconium, there is iron. And, and it was important to, uh, to, uh, to do some, uh, some measurements in collaboration with uh, a geology department in, in, our, in our university. And uh, I, uh, some of my students was working on it. It is a uh, Traoré, and, and, and by that, you know who is sitting here, and, uh, and other uh, students. So it was, it was very interesting, because we combined uh, this method with, with also the LIPS technique, and I'm going after to talk about that. Because what, is, what was our problem with, uh, with, uh, with the LIPS uh, technique is that you, you can make measurement, but the problem is how to to measure the, the concentration. Uh, I, I will talk later about it in collaboration with uh, GASMI, how we, how we make uh, something concerning this, uh, the measurement of at least of electron dance density. So here we, we, also, we also apply this technique in agricultural products. You know, in, in Senegal, people are, are drinking a lot of tea. It is like here in Italy, people are drinking a lot of coffee. And, and we have tea coming from different places, from China, from Cameroon, 
from, uh, from uh, North Africa, from Kenya. And, and it was important to, uh, to, to know uh, the, the, the provenance of this different tea. And also there is another kind of tea, it is uh, Artemisia, which is very, very, which is uh, uh, known as to fight against malaria. So we, we try to, 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 to make uh, a differentiation of this different tea by, uh, by X-ray uh, techniques and also by, by LIPS technique. And after we, we use a principal component analysis to, 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 to see what is the provenance of, 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 of a different tea. And this, is, this, this work also was done by, uh, by, by uh, Traore uh, and uh, some other people in, in, uh, in, my, in my lab. So uh, this is uh, the same uh, application, but here you have uh, more detail in the, in the, in the spectrum. You, you can see the different elements which are uh, contained in this. Uh, uh, this is the T uh, number, number three uh, sample from Cameroon. And, and this is the, the tree uh, uh, number five uh, sample from China. So you, you, you can see. And, and from China, there is different kind of tea in Senegal. There is cheval. There is uh, fecha, there is fort, there is hela, there is, uh, you see, all, all these kind of tea are, are, are in Senegal and people are, are, are using them very, very often. So now I, I will uh, start to talk about the, the lasers uh, breakdown spectroscopy, uh, which is uh, also a very interesting technique. It is, uh, it is fast and it is uh, okay somehow non-destructive, but in any way in our lab, the samples that we, we take uh, for, for the measurement, we, because we got a two, uh, 200 millijoule uh, neodymium Yag laser, so there is, there is a small damage in the, in, the, in the sample in any way, but it's not, uh, it's not so, so terrific. So, uh, and this lip techniques, it, it rely a minimum sample preparation, and it can be applied on sample of uh, arbitrary shape in solid, liquid or in, uh, in gaseous uh, status. So this is the, the, the equipment uh, we got in, uh, in, in our lab. Also, this was in the framework of, uh, of the collaboration of, of the lab network with uh, Uppsala University. So here, we, in order to, uh, to be sure that, that you, you don't need a goggle to, uh, to, to make a measurement because here we have a, we have a chamber where uh, if uh, the sample is inside the chamber, and you cannot, the laser is not operating if, uh, if the chamber is open. So, and if it is closed, you, you, you have not uh, any, any damage for you because the, the radiation are stopped by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by this green glass here. It is radiation at uh, 1,064 uh, uh, nanometers. And, and this is, a, uh, I, will, I, will, I will talk about that after, this is some other, uh, uh, application of the lips. The, the first, when we, we start the first experiment, we, we were able to, uh, to bring our friend from, from Spain, uh, Gasmi Tayeb, who works in the lips laboratory in, uh, in CDTA in Algeria. So we, we, we make uh, the first measurement uh, with him and, and we, uh, we make a calibration free method. We use a calibration free method to, to measure the electron density. Of, uh, of, of aluminum uh, alloys. Okay, but I'm not going to, to show this here, but I, I just want to, 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 uh, uh, to show you what is the, the, the enter equipment, as you can see, it is a, it is a very, uh, very, very friendly uh, equipment, and it is very solid, and, and still now we are, we are doing a lot of work with it. Here we, we do some application in soil pollution. This is very important in, uh, in, in Senegal, not only in Senegal, but everywhere. We have a very nice bay in, uh, in Senegal. The, na is, the name is Han, Han Bay. It was one of the beautiful bay, I can say, in West Africa. But unfortunately, nearby, they, they, there is many industry, and the industry are, are diversing their pollutants in the sea. And you see what, what happened to the, to the nice bay with such kind of things. So we try to, to, to make some, some measurement uh, with, uh, with our, lib, uh, our LIPS uh, system. And uh, some of uh, my, uh, few of my students was working for their, uh, their MPhil thesis and also for their PhD thesis. 
So this is uh, also we, we try to, to measure the pollution in a in plant in Dakar using the lips. We we, we took a bark of, uh, of 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 trees in the street where there is many cars going on, and we make a, a measurement. To, this is uh, the name is Azadarita Indica in Senegal, but uh, the, his, uh, his common name is is a nim, a nim trees. So we we have. Uh, make some measurement, and, and we have seen a zirconium. And the explanation of the presence of zirconium is that in Senegal, uh, in many places, uh, uh, especially near the sea, the sand, there is a lot of zirconium. Even now, there is an industrial exploitation of zirconium, which is used in a, in a cell phone and in a many kind of uh, uh, technological apparat. And, and also, we, we try to to use the lips uh, to, to study uh, med medicinal plant. Because you know, in Africa, many people, they have no money to, to, buy, to buy medicines. So they, they, they got their, uh, they, they, they don't go to the doctor, but they go to the, uh, to the traditional practitioner who gives them some, some plant to say, okay, you have to drink this and you will. So we, 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 we were th thinking to try to see what is, what is the, 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 the content of this medicinal plant? And, and we know also in advance that the potassium is one of the elements which is very important uh, for, uh, for diabetic people because uh, the presence of, of, of potassium is, is a way to, uh, uh, for, the, for the cell to, to, control, to control the sugar. So we try to, to, to make this uh, potassium content in different, in different plants like in a, in basilic, basilic is also used here in Italy, in uh, Moringa olifera, in uh, Combretum, in Kenkeliba. The Kenkeliba is, is a drink, is, it is like coffee for Italian. For the, for, the, uh, for the breakfast, people in Senegal, they are drinking Kenkeliba. And, and Kenkeliba was, was supposed to be very, very strong uh, to fight against, against stroke. So we, we, we were trying also to see what is inside. Uh, and also in the citronelle, in the menta piperita, in, uh, in menta spicata. You know, I, I have difficult to, to pronounce all these names because we do it we, in collaboration with uh, people from, uh, from biology. In French, uh, you call them uh, biology végétale because in, in France they make a, a differentiation between biology animal, animal biology, and, and vegetal. Uh, biology. In, uh, we have a big university. We have uh, 120,000 students, and we have many departments. So it is it is a good way to have a, a collaborative action with these uh, with these different uh, department and to see uh, many things. And and this work is is going on, is going on for for other plants and to 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 know exactly what is. And we got also collaborative action with uh, with. Uh, with the odonto stomatology department. It is, a, it is the dental department in our university. Uh, this is uh, two of my students working on, uh, on dental analysis. The, the girl is from, from Morocco. And uh, the objective was to assess the, the spectral variation uh, depending on the pathology of, of different patients affected by the dental mineral tissue, and also to establish a correlation between a different lesion and chemical basic composition of the, of the tooth. It was a, a very, very interesting study because we, we, we have noticed that even we, we can make a, 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 gender, a gender differentiation. So I, I never think about that, that uh, there could be a kind of gender differentiation in the, in the teeth for men and for, for, for women. So this is some of the uh, of, of, of a spectral, but, but of course this one is, is due to the apparatus of, a, of, a, of the doctors because they have, a, they have a, a apparatus where there is a, this, a, this metal. And this is some of the spectrum eh, in, in, a, in the dentin tissue for, uh, for nitrogen, for calcium, for carbon, for potassium based on the different pathology of, of the dental. The, the, our doctors, they take about uh, 75, 75 uh, sample, and uh, the, the analysis was made in 75 sample. 
and uh, it was published in the, in the dental and oral surgery. Okay, uh, now I, I come to the uh, multispectral imaging spectroscopy. As, as I tell from the beginning, this uh, multispectral uh, uh, imaging spectroscopy, we started in, uh, in 2009 in Ghana, and also in 2010, uh, there was a, a, another workshop in Ghana. I, I talk about that at the beginning of my, of my, uh, of my talk. And uh, the country participating with the support of ISP uh, in 2008, 9, 11, 12, in Mali, Ghana, Kenya, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, there was a last activity was in 2015 in Senegal during the year of light. So this is uh, uh, the meeting in Ghana. Here, one can recognize uh, Sun Swanberg giving lecture. And here, this is a, a group of students mounting their own microscope. Uh, you, you can recognize here uh, a guy from Senegal. A girl is from Ghana. I think this one is from, from Ivory Coast. There is somebody else from, from, from Ghana here. No, at least it was in the University of Cape Coast in Ghana. And it was very, very interesting because uh, each group have to mount his microscope and after to take it home and, uh, uh, and continue to work with it. We, we want to do the same with, uh, with an optical tweezer, but it was not possible. But maybe Dan will talk about it because they got a, an, a sample here in a... In, a, in, in ICTP at Eletra, where people are working with it. Here, this is the schematic view of a, of a microscope, of a transform microscope by, by uh, Michele is a, and, and, uh, and Sun Swanberg and all. It is one of the students, a very, a very smart student of Sun Swanberg, who make this different change. And uh, we can make a microscopy in a, in a, in a different geometry and uh, the, of, of, of the exposure time and gain of a, of a camera can be also set, and a, a, a live update of uh, sample optical property are, are also shown. So you can, the image which is obtained by, uh, with the system are safe uh, in the TIFF format. So for, for visualization and image processing, we use MATLAB with a possibility to see the image in black and white, three color, red, green, blue or false color representation. But in, in our laboratory in, in Senegal, we, 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 go, we go beyond because we, we use now this uh, machine learning technique to make also a differentiation in the, in the malaria diagnostic between healthy cell and infected cell. Okay, so the, the multispectral imaging microscope we have used in, in our lab. It, I think also it is used in other lab of a, of a network, maybe in Ivory Coast, in, in Mali, to, to make the characterization of Plasmodium falciparum, infected red blood cell. And for this purpose, we use this microscope to study optical property in diffusion and transmission mode. In addition, we use a machine learning technique for the differentiation of healthy and contaminated RBC cell. And the main aim is to get a quick malaria uh, diagnostic. You know, uh, usually in, uh, in Africa, they use the, the malaria diagnostic, they, they use the, the lamel, where they take a, a drop of blood, and after they, they go to the lab, and it can take more, sometime more than one day to know what is going on. And in the meantime, the patient can die. So there is, there is a need to have a, a quick diagnostic system eh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to know if immediately if it is a malaria or if it is not malaria. Because sometimes they give you a, a medicine which is very bad for you. I remember my wife was sick and they give to her, to her a medicine, but it, it was not malaria. And, and, and she was very, very bad due to the malaria uh, pills that they give to her. It was terrible, even since she, she got a problem with the eyes. So, and, and myself, I was very afraid. And after that, I, I don't want to take malaria pills. So it is, 
It is just uh, to say that it is a serious problem in, a, in, a, in, a, in Africa. So this is the, 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 the photograph of a micros microscope in, in our lab, as I, I show you the schematic view by, by uh, Michele and, and, and all. So here, this is uh, my, my student working on it. This is uh, uh, Salma, is uh, in the lab, and, and by uh, working uh, on, on, on the microscope. There is other student. So this is the component of a, of a multispectral uh, microscope. There is a megapixel uh, camera, what you see the characteristic here. So the, the wavelengths which are used is uh, 380, 400, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, as, as you see in one of the of, of, of slide of, uh, of by, it is in, uh, at uh, one, 470 that we can see here. Uh, this is the ocean, this is the spectrometer from ocean optics. This is a very useful spectrometer and it is, it is not very expensive. It costs about $5,000. But uh, 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 we, we got a support, of course, from, from, uh, from ISP to get all these things. And uh, there is, this is the, the result in scattering mode and in transmission mode. And I will show you after that it is in scattering mode that you can, you can have a good result with this uh, microscopic uh, uh, system. So here, this is some of the image in the, in the, in the diffusion geometry. And here, this is the optical spectra. Uh, this is the treatment by, by MATLAB, not machine learning. After, I, I will show you. Well, what is the, the machine learning technique? Here, this is the machine learning technique. It consists of the following. You have a known sample. With this known sample, you make a construction with a function, and you, you set the, the mean square value. And you make a validation of, of this testing with, uh, with, uh, with known sample here. So after that, you take the unknown sample, and with your, with your uh, hyperbolic function in the, in the exponents of this uh, hyperbola. In the exponential here, there is a parameters of the blood sample, healthy and infected. And after that, you, you construct your function and, and you calculate the, the mean square value again and you compare to the mean square value of the, of the, of the training set. And if there is a uh, a matching, so this means that, okay, what you have done is okay, is, is good. So this is the, the, the result obtained with this, uh, in, a, in transmission mode. Here, the, the, the sensitivity is about uh, uh, 92%. And if you are in the, in the uh, diffusion mode, you see the sensitivity is, uh, is 96%. So this is a very, very important statistic tool, not only for, for microscopy, it, it worked also for, for LIPS, for all these things that it is difficult for, for you to, uh, to know the concentration, to know things, so you can, you can make a, a separation. So I, I personally, I think that uh, it, is, it is good to, uh, to take that for, uh, in, in, in many labs. But of, co of course, it, 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 uh, for that, you need to, uh, to, to do some, some programmation to know uh, also maybe MATLAB, to know LabVIEW, LabVIEW interface. In our laboratory, we have a LabVIEW interface with a, with a microscope. And now I, I come to uh, the part concerning the multispectral imaging in remote sensing, using telescope combined with lasers. This is also one of the work of our, our uh, LAM and SAB network, ASFIN network. Uh, we got a, a, special, a special workshop in, a, in, a, in, a, in Kenya where uh, there was a participating country from, from, from Kenya, of course, from Senegal, from Ivory Coast, from Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, no, yes, this is Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso. And with uh, the participation of uh, Sun Swanberg, Michele, and also a Chinese because Sun now is working with uh, Katrina in China. So they, they bring their Chinese friend also 
to in working with us, and they bought the equipment in China. And the equipment in China are not very, very expensive. I think the, the old equipment is, is less than $10,000 all, all together. You, you will see, I will show you the, the different equipment with lasers and, and everything. And uh, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, supported by, uh, uh, financially by ISP. So this is uh, the, the field uh, experiment uh, in, in Nairobi, where here we, you can see uh, um, Bay and Salma from Senegal, Anderson from, uh, from Ghana, and uh, another guy here, I don't know. Who is it? You know him? Ah, it is, oh, okay. <laughs> it, is, it is my friend, it is uh, Jojo. Jojo from, from Ghana is, is sitting there, okay. You know, from, from here I have, I, I cannot see very well the, the image, I don't know if, from your place if you see it. And, and this is, you see, you see the people were, were really exciting. This is a guy from Mali uh, looking at, uh, at the telescope. There is two telescopes, I will, I will explain later, to, uh, for, the, for the collection of the, of the signal, for the registration, for the collection of, of data and so on. And, uh, and, and this is uh, Michele and uh, one of my students and, and, and myself and also uh, uh, Salma is uh, sitting. We, we, we do directly a field experiment in the, in the research uh, center on insects in Kenya. This is Sun himself looking at the, at the telescope. With, uh, with, uh, with a girl from Cameroon and uh, a man from Kenya. This is just to show that this is a, uh, uh, an international uh, uh, network, a Pan-African, I can say, uh, network, which is very important. Me, personally, I believe to Pan-Africanism. I, I think that, as say the president of Ghana, Kwame Krumah, he said, say Africa must unite. And, and he's here, this is in the night, uh, a tracking of the mosquito vectors. Because, you know, we got all the complete equipment with a, with a set to go in the, in the countryside with, uh, with everything to, to, to protect yourself uh, against mosquito and to make a, to make a tracking of, of these mosquitoes. So this was the water Raman spectrum, which was taken in Kenya. And it was published by, by Michael, Sun, Swanberg, and, and Obama during the Kenya workshop. You know, the, this is the, the laser shining from the from, from the telescope and the different. And, and we took water from the river in, a, in, a, in Nairobi, and also uh, from the tape and from different places to, to make a comparison between the different spectrum. Now here, this is a field experiment in, in Senegal, in Dakar. This is a, in, the, in the university stadium during the rainy season, a measurement done by, by, by and other students with a, with, a, with a telescope. I will show some of the results that we have obtained also from that. Okay, the, the instrumentation. Okay, I will, I, will, I will bring all of them. Okay, as you see, the, it is almost uh, the same component we have, a, we have a telescope, we have a ocean optics, we have a, a lasers, we have a camera, and we have, a, we have a, a, a detector. And this is the data acquisition system. So, uh, the instrumentation we have used, this is the diode lasers at uh, different wavelengths, and the power was up to one milliwatt. I think these lasers, they cost maximum $100 in China. So one watt lasers. This is why in working with uh, this instrument, we have to be very careful. Uh, each group has a, a, a goggle to, uh, to, to, to be extremely careful. And in my lab, I was always uh, uh, afraid when my students are, uh, are going outside with this system. And I, I tell them, you have to be careful. I don't want somebody to complain after that uh, we, we use a, a laser to, to hurt him. And, and also, we have to do it in the place where there is no, no plane coming. You know, in, in our university, sometimes there is a, there is a plane flying fly, 
uh, over the university. And, and they do it in the night. And we, we, can, we do our experiment also in the night. So we have to be very careful also for that. So this is uh, the this laser system with a, with a different filter that, uh, that you can use for that, uh, long pass filter. And all the equipment also was bought in China by, by, by Sun, uh, Swanberg. So I think that your stay in China is very, very good for us, eh, Katarina? <laughs> okay. Now I, I'm going to show the, the principle of a, of, of a measurement. So we, 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 the first measurement we have done, it is a passive, uh, passive instrumentation using just sunlight. So for that, you, you, you have this, uh, this black box here. If, if a fly is, is uh, flying across this, uh, this, black, this black box, you have a sun coming. and and you send to the, to the telescope. The, the, it is sent to the telescope, the, the big telescope. And after that, it goes to the spectrum, to the, to the, to the ocean optic spectrometers. And, and after, you know, in your computer. So there is, the other part of the signal is coming to the, to the small telescope and to the data acquisition system. This is, this is the, 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 the principle of this uh, uh, field measurement. Okay, and this is the, the reflectance uh, spectrum that you, you, you can get. And, and this is uh, uh, done by, uh, by, by Mbai, uh, Sila, and, uh, and that. And it is published in the African Review of Physics, which is published here in Trias. This is the Fourier transform of a, of a time varying signal. You, you have to do that in order to know the frequency, because you have to measure the frequency. And after I will say why it is important to, uh, uh, to, to measure the frequency, because the, the mass of an of a, of a insect is related to the, to the, to the frequency. And if uh, as far as mosquitoes are concerned, or uh, other small insects, it is important to know the mass to make a differentiation between male and female. And, and you know the, the, the mosquito female is the one who is extremely dangerous because it is the one who is uh, trans, trans, transmitting the, the malaria uh, parasite, uh, the, the, the plasmodium falciparum. So this is why it is, it is important if you make a, a tracking uh, to know what, what is going on. So this is a, also the Fourier transform of a time varying signal to, to, determine, the, uh, to determine the frequency. Uh, here, it is, this was done directly in the garden of, uh, of our institute uh, with a butterfly and, and a dragonfly. So, and with an estimation of a, of a mass. This is the formula for the mass which is from, uh, from, these, uh, from these references that you, you can see uh, in the bottom. Okay, now this is the, the last part of, uh, of my talk concerning the, the, the celebration of the International Year of Light by the LAM network and also by the ASFIN network. It is a, uh, it is a network for uh, spectral imaging. And, and this, uh, this workshop was uh, sponsored by ICTP, by, uh, by IUPAP, by ISP, International Science Program, by our university, and, and a part by the government of Senegal. And we do it uh, in, in the reserve, uh, a little bit uh, 80, 80 uh, kilometers from Dakar. And uh, we, we, we have a participation also of, uh, of Vengu at this uh, workshop. So this is uh, the different uh, system for this horizontal microscopy. No, we are doing almost, we are going to do almost the same. But we want to, uh, to start to do some experiment on optical tweezer with, uh, with, this, uh, with this system. This is a student working in the, in the green, with the green lasers. And, and you can see here, the, the girl is from Mali, 
the boy, one of the boys is from, uh, from Ghana. I think the other one is from, uh, from Kenya. And, and this is uh, in, the, in the blue configuration, in the blue laser configura configuration. So we have also, of course, a participation of, of, of female. This is one of my students, and uh, the two others are from Mali and from Ghana. And, and this is in the, in the red uh, configuration. So what we want to do in, in Senegal with this project is to, uh, to make a characterization of, uh, of tissue. And this characterization of, uh, of, uh, of, of tissue, uh, it could be uh, healthy tissue, cancer tissue. It could be also food product. So there is a lot of application of this uh, uh, horizontal uh, macroscopy. And you, you can uh, use different laser configuration uh, to do what, uh, what you, have, you, want, you want to do. OK, this is, uh, this is all. And uh, I, I want to, uh, to, uh, to, to acknowledge the Abdul Salam uh, International Center for Theoretical Physics, the International Program in Physical Science, and the International Science Program at Uppsala University for their support and scientific collaboration. And my special thank to Soon and Katrina Swanberg for their support, collaboration, and friendship. To Nimela and all the staff of ICTP for their collaboration for many, many years, and also their support and, and understanding. I think we'll continue to, to work with all these organizations, ISP, ICTP, uh, OEA. But we have to thank the, the African government also. Even, even if sometime in Africa it is very difficult to, uh, uh, to, do, to do research, but the governments that are supporting, if you are, if you are doing workshop, if you are trying to, to bring international people, because they are proud to say, OK, in Senegal we have an international meeting, people coming from, okay, from, from Zimbabwe, from, from South Africa, from uh, Sweden, and so on. They are happy to say that. OK, or in Ghana also, we, we made a lot of conference in Ghana with the support of the of the Ghana government. This is why I say uh, African uh, governmental authority and, and university authority also, where we have organized our, our different activity. And uh, I want also to, uh, to thank my, my colleague from the LAM network, Professor Bashwa, uh, Professor Gasmi, Professor Murat, Professor Jojo Egan, who have done a lot for the development of optical science in Africa. And at the least, not last but not least, I want to thank all my students for their uh, inestimable uh, contribution. So this is uh, to acknowledge the different institution, ICTP. This is Uppsala University through the ISP program, the, the LAM network, the International Atomic Energy, and the University Sheikh Antadiop of Dakar. Thank you. <laughs>